welcome back to the channel guys and i'm welcoming here nicole marie from soul path crystals she is the owner of soul path crystals magic.com they sell a variety of crystals talismans grids and crystal kits their etsy store and offer tyrant and all for readings online as well as distant reiki sessions and free crystal consultations certified crystal reiki master and current student of the black rose witchcraft welcome hi thank you you're welcome we're here to talk about some topics and the first question is have you heard of star seeds and if so what is your definition of them star seeds yes um i have heard of star seeds um i'm i'm very fascinated by the idea of them um there are supposedly several different kinds of star seeds and from what i've read about them some are very good and they're here to help and some are not so good and they may be here to do harm um, some of them are very aware of who they are and where they came from and some of them are not so the majority of star seeds according to what i know um, they're souls who originally came from other star systems and they're planted here hence the seeds part of their name um, they're planted here to facilitate these big changes to humanity and um, they're here to help us heal and they inspire creativity and innovation and um, a star seed usually doesn't know that they are a star seed until they have like this big spiritual awakening sometime during adulthood but there's usually signs that someone might be a star seed so like as a child they may have shown an interest in the paranormal or the occult at a very young age uh, they're usually fascinated by astrology and astronomy they love looking at the stars um, typically they're the weird kids they're the ones that don't have a lot of <laughs> yep yep um, <laughs> they don't have a lot of friends and they're usually loners because they don't feel like they fit in with any one group and they they will just have this sense of longing or homesickness for a place that they don't even remember exists um a lot of star seeds will also have uh, chronic health problems. They usually have a lot of environmental allergies or food and medication allergies. Some of them have autoimmune diseases. Um, why this is the case, I can only guess, but it it's almost like their extraterrestrial souls are rejecting their human bodies or vice versa or whatever. Um, and then, uh, the other thing is that they usually have abilities like psychic abilities or um, energy healing abilities and star seeds tend to incarnate when it's time for earth and humans to level up so that's that's the gist of what i know about star seeds well i think we're on the same boat then <laughs> so i just want to get i know your... Well, and when you start to learn about star seeds, like you read about these things and I'm like, I'm like checking all these boxes. Like, am I a star seed? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I started, what was that? Oh my God. See, I never really had a computer. So my husband's so, so sweet. When we were like boyfriend, girlfriend. We went on a shopping thing. He's like, here's a laptop. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> and then since I already had that drawing of researching this stuff already since I was a little kid, I always had a book, a bookshelf full of stuff like this. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, too. can I Google stuff? So I started looking for stuff and that's where I saw star seeds. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, and there, there's so, there's a lot more information now than there ever has been about them. I, I read new things about them all the time, but the, the best part is like the consistency in the story. So that's how, that's how I feel like there's some truth to it because you read all these different accounts from all these different people and all these different places. And there's these things that remain consistent in all the stories. So yeah. um, I love seeing that. 
I find that very interesting. I'm like, this is if this wasn't real, it wouldn't have a consistency to it. It's true. So it's very fascinating. I yeah. started looking it up. I think it was in 2009 or 10, and there wasn't anything too much about it. Yeah. So I was like, what is this? <laughs> so people kept coming together and, and looking more information, and they, there's a lot of stuff out now, too. Mm -hmm. um, the next question What is your favorite crystal and why? <sighs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not fair. That's not fair. Um, that's like asking me which one is my favorite child. I, um, know. <laughs> I just, I have so many different crystals. Like, I can't even tell you how many. I don't think I've ever actually counted. Um, I have several that I use more than others. Like, um, right now I'm using a lot of Moldavite and Libyan Desert Glass. Actually, I'm wearing a moldavite necklace right now. Oh, that's pretty. Um, these aren't actually even crystals. These are tectites. These um, Libyan desert glass and moldavite are the result of meteors crashing. Like these meteors crash and then they found these crystals there. So they're uh, not of this world, not technically crystals, but they, uh, they have metaphysical properties and they are uh, super fun. Um, as far as like a crystal crystal, um, I have a soft spot for garnet, I guess. Oh, um, I'm, a, I'm a January Aquarius, so that's my birthstone, and that was the first crystal I ever owned. So, wow! I think what was my first one? I think it was quartz. Mm -hmm. I just, that's a good one. <laughs> like if you're if you're only gonna have one crystal, make it clear quartz. Yeah. <laughs> and then. What crystal would you recommend for people never held that never held a crystal before? Um, I I would say something like amethyst or rose quartz, probably. Um, those are both very yeah, they're very easy to work with. They're very gentle. Mm -hmm. um, you can find them anywhere. They're very affordable. Um, when you're just starting out, you don't want to go straight for those rare and exotic crystals because those can have like a really strong, like startling energy. So um, I would say start with something gentle, like like amethyst. But um, yeah, if you had never touched a crystal in your life and the first crystal you ever worked with was like a moldavite that would like, that might break your brain or like <laughs> make you feel really sick. Um, and it might turn you off from using crystals. So start start small and work up. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, what's the difference between? Oh, this one's a, coming out a little bit different of the topic because I'm interested in this and I always get okay. so confused. <laughs> um, what's the difference between astral travel and lucid dreams? Mm. Okay, so it, it, gonna, you have. <laughs> well, I, I can answer your question, but I'm going to be very honest with you that um, I cannot do either of those things. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't tried very hard, to be fair, because I've been kind of hyper focused on crystals and specializing in crystals. Okay. So um, if I ever tried, maybe I could. But I do know I know about them because my husband can do them. Oh, okay. um, yeah, maybe I, sh I should go get him. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, astral travel is where um, you actually leave your body mm -hmm. and physically, or it's not physically, psychically travel to other places. So, um, I know I know a psychic who had lost some like important piece of jewelry. I think it I think it was like a necklace or something. Mm -hmm. And so she asked another psychic who could astral travel to like go to her house psychically and find it for her. And so this person did and they were like, "Oh, here it is. It's in your laundry basket." And so when she went home that night, that's exactly where it was. Oh, wow. Um and that that actually might be called remote viewing, but I think like I think they're related. They're like yeah, kind they're... of the same, I guess. Um, but then like, so lucid dreaming is like totally different. This is where like, and, and like I said, my husband and my youngest son can do this. And like, they don't even have to try. They just like every night they lucid dream without trying at all. And I know people like work really hard to be able to do this and they don't even have to try. But um, 
So it's where you, you're in a dream and then you become consciously aware that you're dreaming and you can start controlling the narrative. So my husband will start dreaming and he'll be like, oh, oh, I'm in a dream. I'm going to, I'm going to go fly now. And he'll start flying around in his dream and um, creating these stories and experiences while he's in the dream. And then he can wake up and like, he's a Pisces. So he like has to tell me every, what was that? My husband's a Pisces. Oh, is he? Okay. So yeah. So does he tell you every single detail of these crazy dreams that they have? So does mine. So (laughs) like, he used Go ahead. to not be able to dream anything and I pushed him like no try to try it you could do it and he's like that's the thing like I don't dream I like I do sometimes when I have a dream it's usually like a message it's like a psychic oh, message okay. I don't just have like random dreams or if I do have a dream it's really boring like I'm grocery shopping or like I'm paying the bills <laughs> like it's never like you know, my husband has these insane like action hero dreams and I just I just don't See, my husband's like you, so it's not an everything, everyday thing. Like it's once in a while, like that. I'm yeah. the one that's like every day or every other day. I'm no, <laughs> sometimes like just forget about him. I don't even pay attention, <laughs> but I try because that's helps to like practice. Like if you write it down, even if it's just that. You oh yeah, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm bad about that. I like, I know you're supposed to keep a journal next to your bed so you can write them down right away. And I just don't. It's hard, <laughs> especially if you're a mom or something like everybody oh, wakes yeah. up at the same time. You're like running to do all mm-hmm. the morning stuff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then the next question was, what was your most impactful in the paranormal, if any, that you had like that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually have two that I can think of that were very impactful. Um, one of them, one of them was actually like a really positive paranormal experience. And one of them was like incredibly terrifying. So um, I'll start with a good one first. Um, the, the positive experience was when um, my youngest son was really sick and a spirit or something probably saved his life. So um, I had been seeing shadow people in my room at night. And the first time it ever happened, like I woke up in the middle of the night and this shadow figure was like looming over me really close to my face. And um, I like, I opened my eyes and I saw it and I like gasped and started to scramble across the bed. And um, he put his hands up and backed away (laughs) like he was really sorry. And then I'm just like sitting in the bed and he's backing up and I watch him walk across my room and go into my closet. And I just kind of like laid awake the rest of the night. I couldn't go back to sleep after that. And then the next night he came back and this time he was at at like the foot of the bed and it looked like he was sitting down in a chair and there were three more shadow people standing behind him and like I don't I don't even know how I knew it was a him because it was just it was like a black silhouette with I couldn't make out any facial features or hair or clothes or anything it, it was just like solid black but he was like three-dimensional like he had form I felt like if I if I reached out I probably could have touched him um but I could just tell it was a him and I could tell that the three standing behind him was one female and two males and they were just watching me like I I didn't really feel afraid of them they weren't mean and they weren't doing anything to me they were just watching me sleep so um I don't know I don't know how I, I just I didn't really feel scared so um during this time this was like a few days later or like a week later um my kids had been sick and like i just thought it was a cold or something so we didn't take them to the doctor and i was just treating them at home and one night i was woken up to hands on my shoulders shaking me and i opened my eyes and there's nobody there 
and these hands they're like pushing me into the bed i was bouncing off the mattress and this voice screamed in my ear he has pneumonia like really loud and so i woke up my husband and we shot out of bed and ran down the hall and we get to his room and he is like gasping and making this like wet gurgle sound and he just he was not breathing very well so we got him to a doctor and he had pneumonia so he yeah he had to be on breathing treatments and antibiotics and I don't even want to think about what might have happened if something hadn't woken me up when when it did. Um, and I don't I don't know if it was one of those shadow people because they never spoke to me. And I even I still see them sometimes and they have never spoken to me. So I guess it could have been something else, but it, it all was happening at the same time. So I thought I don't know, maybe it was related, but I'm not sure. Do you, do so you believe in like I've heard higher self? I still don't understand the mm -hmm. concept, but it could have been yeah. maybe like your higher self trying to like hey. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. It could have been. It could have been like my spirit guide or my son's spirit guide. Like I, I'm open to any possibility because what happened that night was just so weird. I can't explain it. I just can't. Amazing. Thank God, you know, um, your your son's okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> But okay, so then the scary thing. So this one was when I was a lot younger. Um, I was probably like 10 or 11 and I was in my brother's room and I, I was looking for something. Like I, I was standing in front of his dresser and I remember like looking in a drawer and I heard this really weird, like like a grunting or a snuffling noise, like, like a pig makes. Yeah, and it was coming from the hallway and I, I turned and looked and there was this thing standing in the doorway just this like creature I don't know I don't know what it was I've I've never seen anything like it and I've never been able to like find any information about what it could have been um, it was short so it was like three or four feet tall and it was really wide. It was taking up like the whole door frame. And uh, it had like this mottled brownish gray skin that looked like slimy. And um, it had like this really wide, like over exaggeratedly wide mouth. And it was like grinning at me with these like beady black eyes and um, like it was it was so scary and it felt like it felt bad it made me feel bad I felt like I was gonna throw up and I I opened my mouth to scream and it was just gone like it didn't like scurry away or fly up into the air it just vanished like it was never there and um you know it's been what it's been 27 years and I can still I can still see that thing in my mind like it was yesterday so, um, you know, I think I've been like fascinated by ghosts and cryptids and demons ever since, you know, maybe maybe trying to figure out what this thing was. And I, I just don't know. I've never heard of, I mean, I've heard of short, like what do they call it? I have a name for that, like little short people. Um, not gremlins. I've heard of that name before. Some other psychic, he said, he, um, they ever heard of Chris? Chris Lemon. Mm -mm. Chris he's a good psychic. He said he's seen them in his house. He oh has my a name God. for them. But I've never heard it being described like that, so I don't think it's that one. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I know I've heard of like the dog hellhounds, but it the way you describe it, it sounds like a pig. Yeah, it was it was sort of piggish. I don't. It didn't really have a nose though, so it didn't have like a snout. But um, yeah, that that house we didn't live there much longer after that, and it actually burned down a couple years ago. And I have always, when I heard that it had burned down, the first thing I thought of was that thing, like maybe it was oh, something. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Now I'm going to be looking up something for that. <laughs> let me know if you find anything because yeah. I haven't found anything. That's interesting. I'll look. I'll let you know. Okay. Um, I can't. I'm like very, 
I can't. I'll be like, that's my downtime. Just go up and read and research. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. The next question: What drew you into witchcraft and why? If that's something. Else. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I think that I think I always was a witch. I just. I didn't know what to call myself until I got older and found other people who were like me. Um, my mom has always been into spiritual stuff, so I kind of grew up around some of this. Um, she is she is not a witch. She would never call herself a witch, but I remember watching her make a pendulum out of her wedding ring when I was really young. Like, she took her ring and tied a string around it and was doing divination. And um, um, so she bought me my first Ouija board and when I was 16 she gave me my first book of spells and I think my my parents always knew that I was different and I'm really lucky that they never tried to dissuade me from any of it but um, when I was in my late 20s I was like I was just feeling lost like I just had this feeling like something was missing but like my life was good and I was happy so I didn't know what exactly I could be missing and then I started having these psychic experiences and like for a while I thought I was going crazy like I thought I had a brain tumor um I've had a brain, uh, brain MRI and I know it's not a tumor so it's not that um but like <laughs> once, yeah because people start like oh maybe there's something yeah that's the first thing like, is like oh you must be having a stroke um, <laughs> no, but like i'm perfectly healthy so um but once i started like accepting these experiences i was having and embracing them um i just i started to see life in a totally different way and i started to feel very strongly like i needed to go back to my roots and i needed to get back into magic that I was starting to get into as a child and um, the, the rest is history. I, I fell deep into the witch world and I am never coming back. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it just, I'm it kind has, of hiding yet though. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I mean, it's, it's changed my life for the better in so many ways. Like yeah. I'm so, I'm so much more balanced and in tune with everything. And I'm just, I'm happier than I've ever been. And I'm just, so grateful every day that I get to be this and I get to do this and it's just it's wonderful so I guess um the thing that I was missing was just that that connection to the universe and to nature and energy and just I, I feel it's like really I, I found pretty. my place here <laughs> it's a beautiful feeling I that's yeah. funny you say it that way and that's kind of what's going on with me now because mm. I was like um ignoring and ignoring and, and just doing the typical like oh, oh yeah church and it will not let you it. ignore it <laughs> no. nope <laughs> um so our next question do you think and this has been in my head since march of last this year mm -hmm. do you think the age of Aquarius, the age of aquarius is coming or is close by oh absolutely absolutely um i'm i'm not an astrologist but I have friends who are, and I talk about it with them, and I try to read as much as I can about it. And from what I can see, all the signs are here. Um, one of the biggest indicators to me is just how the energy feels. Like the past few years have just been awful and painful. And it's like, it's like these are labor pains, just like, every birth is painful and difficult and we are literally being born into this new age so it was never going to be easy and it was never going to be comfortable um we're we're leaving the age of pisces that has been an age of control and power it's the few controlling the many it's been deeply rooted in christianity it's been a very strict age of telling people what to think and what they can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. And this age of Aquarius is gonna swoop in and rock that boat because <laughs> Aquarius, Aquarius is the rebellion. Mm -hmm. It is the social justice warrior. It's the eccentric. It's all about brotherhood. Um, and above all of that, it's about freedom. So it's 
breaking out of those Piscean chains and forging ahead on a completely new path. And I think that we've been seeing the signs for a long time. Um, we're seeing uh, more people being open about other religions and other kinds of spirituality. Like witchcraft is pretty much mainstream right now. Mm -hmm. um, I've been selling crystals for only a few years, but I'm seeing a huge influx in people buying crystals and wanting to know about them. Um, I'm seeing a lot more men getting into crystals. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got people in my inbox at least once a week asking me if I can help them get started because they they heard the call and they want to know more. And it's, I'm, I'm seeing, yeah, I'm seeing people asking a lot more questions and they're seeking the truth and they just, they're not going to be spoon fed the stuff that they has been forced down their throats their whole lives. And um, we're seeing it in like um, the LGBTQ community. They're feeling more comfortable being openly who they are. And we're seeing them being represented more in the media and in politics. I think I think I read that like um, over a thousand openly LGBTQ candidates ran for office this year. And a lot so, of them won too. I saw yeah, that. Yeah. That's really cool. So people are embracing these Aquarian characteristics of acceptance and freedom and brotherhood. And we're seeing people demanding justice for racial inequality in numbers that we have never seen before. And it just, it feels amazing. It's incredible to watch. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's a hard thing to watch, but at the same time, I feel really lucky that I get to live during this time and watch this change being ushered in. So like yeah. if it's, it, it is so close. I feel like it's not exactly there yet, but very, very soon. Yeah, I, I feel the same. That's cool that you think. That's so interesting how I <laughs> ask somebody and they come up with somewhat the same question. So we all feel it. We're all like yeah. in it. Oh, yeah. Everybody's feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a half hour. If you want anything to talk about extra or anything you want to share with the... Um. I don't know. I think I, I think that's all I have to talk about today. That's all, all I can think of. We got into some pretty deep topics. <laughs> I hope you like that. <laughs> A lot of stuff. Yeah, it was it was good topics. I love I love talking about this stuff, and I don't have a lot of people I can talk to because they think that I'm crazy. So I, I really same. appreciate it. <laughs> like my kids, my kids are um, nine and twelve. So I talk to them about it, and they're just like. <laughs> wow, <kind> of okay. <laughs> my husband's really nice about it he'll talk about it for a while he is mine blows my mind the way he thinks so i'll talk to him for a while and then he's like <laughs> like any guy yeah. um so thank you for coming on the show Nicole. Um, if you thank you so much it, you're welcome if you get any if you want to get any of her stuff on the website feel free i'll put it links down below and again it's soul path crystals that's her ig you can go look and shop on her id too there's a lot of beautiful books they have there so thank you thank you so much all right bye everybody